build ship. So a low-code visual backend builder product that lets you develop your entire backend workflows powered by AI. So you can combine any AI models or third-party tools you might have in a workflow style that all of you might be familiar with. And you'll be able to actually also go down to code level and change things any way you like and deploy cloud run jobs that will be scalable on Google Cloud. Before we actually go into the demo part of things, I want to talk about what are the specific things you can build with Billship. So say, suppose you're building a Flutter app or a web app and you want to build an API for it. So you can do that with Billship and you can basically do things like connect, say, in an incoming data audio file translate that to a language or use a Palm API to generate text, give it back to your users. So essentially any API that you want to build, combining a bunch of AI models and maybe third-party tools like SendGrid to send email or connect it to your Slack or Discord to send messages or alerts. So essentially you are able to build your complete backend workflow in this visual style. Some examples are database CRUD that you would want to do but you don't want to spend a lot of time building functions and deploying and doing DevOps. So you just build this visually, one click and deploy. You can build any API with it. You can also build any schedule jobs. Say, suppose you want to run something every day at 5 p.m. or generate a report or run something every 10 minutes to do something. For example, at the end of month, you want to consolidate all your Stripe users, generate a report, see who were people canceled, what reason was it, do some analysis on that. You need a report that is sent off to your ops team, you're able to do that. Or you can actually use things like, if your users are submitting form, you can use Google Vision or CR to extract data from it and use that text to do further analysis and processing. And basically you can integrate an AI model, a third party tool and build cloud run jobs so essentially your entire backend stack in low code style in five to 10 minutes. And if it's something like an MVP that you want to use it for testing a couple of users, or if it's a millions of users because it's on Google Cloud stack, you can do that. And essentially it lets you build some MVP that can scale. Let's dive into the demo actually. As you can see, this is what your dashboard will look like. You can essentially start off building an API or a schedule jobs. Let's start with an API and say, suppose you want to add uh, a node that does a Firestore CRUD or a Palm API text generation. So you can easily add that. But if you don't have a node from our node explorer, what you can actually do is generate one with AI by simply asking for it. You can say, hey, generate a random number between two given numbers. So what this does is it's actually creating a node custom built for your logic. This is a very simple example for the purpose here, but you can actually give, say, suppose if you want to use an API from something like Slack, you can basically take the documentation code snippet, put it there and say, hey, I want a node generator for Slack. So yeah, here you have the node generated. And as you can see, I can simply say between one and 100. Let me get rid of this node. And you can also say, what do you want to return? This API is called. So let me call, add the return node. And let's add the statuses, 200. And let's return the value that was generated in the previous random generated block. So essentially, you kind of pass on data from one node to another, and you're able to build your logic. So here. You can just pass on the number that got generated here, but actually if you see here, you can use any expression, right? So you can say that, or you can actually add something to it. You can essentially code here. Let's ship this and see it in action. So this is a very simple hello world style PI. So as you can see, it takes about a couple of seconds and you get this endpoint immediately. You can copy it over. And when you trigger it, it should generate a number. There you go, the number got generated. This is just a very basic example, but let's make it more interesting, right? Let's actually go and say text generation, how that looks like. So here you see similar API is being called. You can give this path a name, but this is the Palm API text uh, generation node that we just added from here. So we can explore here. There are a lot of nodes, but we just added this one. And you can say, hey, 
my incoming API's query parameter prompt, use that as the prompt. You can use this, we are using the text bison model and you can tweak any of these other parameters or leave it as default. And you can say, hey, return the output that was generated by this node. And you are specifically looking for the output field. Cool. This is also, you can just ship it like this. And then when you come back here, use this endpoint and you make a call, give it a prompt as the query parameter, say hello in French. There you go. So this is all cool. What's good here is you can build more complex things. So you can branch, make a logic flow like that, or you can run things parallelly. So if you have a bunch of things that can run, be queried at called at the same time, say you want to update your database, you want to get a send a notification on Slack, you also want errors to be handled, you can do a bunch of things like that. And what's interesting here is you can look at the code. So it's not like a no code black box that you don't know what is happening. And you can have full flexibility to go down to code level here. And this is a very familiar JavaScript TypeScript. So you can take code snippets that are um, available anywhere and plug them in, or you can tweak this. So you say, suppose you want to uh, add additional logic here, you are able to do that. And then you, once you save and ship, it's essentially doing the entire process of de deploying things without you having to go down to some console or somewhere and do some kind of command line to deploy and do some things like that. And it also has version control, so you can go back and change things if you want. You have the usual things that you typically expect from a developer tool, like logs and things like that. So we have a bunch of templates. We can explore them and start with any of them. For example, we have this Google Vision text detection template, as I was talking about earlier, where simply given an image URL. So let's take this image, which is a receipt, and you are able to figure out what is the text inside it. So if you look at the nodes here, it's a similar API call. We are using the Google Vision text generation node. And here we are simply passing in the image URL that gets passed in the API call and you are returning whatever text was detected. So if I were to test this, um, so let me go here, add the image URL. And yeah, so in this receipt, as you can see, all this text is created. So now you don't have to end at this point. Now you can continue to build by saying, hey, now, okay, now I got the text and let me add some more logic and continue to build your entire logic this way. And you can also do authentication on these calls. So say, suppose you're using Firebase auth, you can essentially go here, add and verify if it's an authorized user or get user data or token. And you can essentially you know, add that logic part to make sure it's a verified API call. Same for vision you are able to pass in the image URL, but you can do more complex things here, right? So if you wanna not just figure out what are the objects in the image, but you wanna use a puppeteer or a browserless kind of API to draw something on the image or generate a PDF and then respond that, you're able to do that. So here, one example that is, I think could be interesting is if you clone this template for Google Vision image detection, You'll get this entire thing. You just need to plug in your API for browserless or if any API is being used at all. And then, for example, let's take this image. So yeah, here you see that it detects the image and it's able to generate an image as well as the objects in the image. So with different kind of boundaries of X and Y coordinates of where that is. So it's saying car, license plate, and so on. And it actually generates the image, puts it in the cloud storage, and if I open that, you can see that it's able to detect things like car, license plate, wheel, and so on. I even used one actually very low res image like this to see what it's able to do. And it's able to detect specific things like footwear, luggage, and car dress, and so on. And good thing is all of these is available as a template, like you can clone it in one click. And yeah, this is like a good starting point to trigger your 
journey towards sparking and building more ideas for your startup that you're already wanting to explore or you want to explore some of the AI capabilities and plug it into your app and then you can further tweak it for your specific cases. And you want to continue doing that, we are here to support you all. Thank you.